Hi, welcome back to another recorded lecture for CEGR 3143 Hydraulics and Hydrology. I'm Jim Bowen. This is a recorded lecture to give you the solutions to homework seven, at least my version of the solutions when I worked the problems. There are a set of notes for this lecture. They're on the Canvas page. Those are here. I'm going to show you what I did to work the problems. I had a couple of, quite a few things open at the same time. I was using a spreadsheet to do my calculations. That's shown here. I've dragged in the assignment uh, shown here at the bottom left. I also had the, a window open with my browser that had several tabs open. Let me just drag it down to show you that I had the assignment and a link to the Wiley course resources that had, uh, and, and I had opened the Moody chart and the table of fluid properties and the textbook in separate tabs to use when I needed them. Let's get started on the problems. This is problem number one. It is flow through a pipe system. It says it's uh, water at 60 degrees Fahrenheit with three branches off a main supply line. And you're looking for the pressure drop from A to E. It gives you these lengths, which I believe vary from, from my problem to your problem. It says it's copper drawn tubing. It gives you the size of the pipe here. It gives you the flow rates. It gives you the flow rate out at E plus the flow rates here, and then asks you to calculate this pressure difference in PSI. Let's look at my solution. I have the givens up here. The first thing I needed to do is calculate the pipe flows in all of the pipes. So I use the steady state incompressible continuity equation given these three flows and the flow out the main line to calculate the missing flows in each of the pipe sections. And then step one from there was to look up from the tables in the textbook, the kinematic viscosity for water at 60 degrees. So I went and went to my fluid properties to get water at 60 degrees to find the kinematic viscosity of 1.21 times 10 to the five, minus 5 feet squared per second. 1.21 times 10 to the minus 5 feet squared per second. Step two then was to find the relative roughness for each of the pipe sections that I needed to calculate the major losses. Went back to the table and found it for drawn tubing, this value for epsilon, 5 times 10 to the minus 6 feet, then divided by the pipe diameter, which I converted from inches to feet, got this value for the relative roughness. Next, I found for each of those pipe sections the velocity and Reynolds number using that pipe diameter of 3.9 inches. I needed these flows that I had previously calculated and then used the equation 4q over pi d squared. I got these values for the pipe, the velocities in each of the pipe sections and then used the Reynolds number equation vd divided by kinematic viscosity to get these values for the Reynolds number. Next, I would use the Moody diagram or an equation. Now that I know the Reynolds number and the relative roughness, I can find the friction factor F. You can look that up in the Moody diagram. I choose to use one of these equations out of the textbook. Let me go to the textbook here and show you that the uh, turbulent portion of the Moody chart is represented by the Colebrook formula. This is the Colebrook formula. It, it's not an explicit equation in that the friction factor that you want to calculate is a function of the friction factor. What I chose to do is use a, another equation that's in the textbook called, a, called the Holland equation, Holland equation, that's an approximation of the Colebrook equation that doesn't have the friction factor in it. That gives you an explicit equation. I solved that in my Moody diagram, or sorry, in my Excel spreadsheet. I solved that in my Excel spreadsheet. And then once I had that calculated friction factor 
using the Holland equation, I then checked it with the Colebrook equation. Since I had an estimate of friction factor along with Reynolds number and relative roughness, I could then calculate it with the Colebrook equation. These are the friction factors that I calculated with the Holland equation. And you can see they're quite close to the Colebrook equation, so I just went ahead and used the, the Holland equation values. 0 0.012813 and 0 0.01357. Next, I found the, the minor loss coefficients for each of these T-joints. I looked it up again in the table out of the textbook. For line flow and threaded connections, I found that for line flow, that head loss coefficient is 0 0.9. Now I had all the information I needed to calculate the head loss, which is the sum of the friction losses and the minor losses. We use the darcy weisbach equation, FL over D, V squared over 2G to get the, those major friction losses and the sum of the head losses some of the my, uh, sorry some of the minor loss coefficients times the velocity head to get the minor losses with these previously calculated values for velocity and given lengths i got these values for the head loss due to friction and with that minor loss coefficient i got these values for the minor losses i added those up and got got these values for the head loss across each of the pipe sections I then added all of those up and got the total head loss for the system of this value. Next, since I'm looking not for the this head loss through the system, but the difference in pressures, I wrote the Bernoulli equation from location A to location E to give me an equation for this difference in pressures. It said that the pressure head, elevation head, velocity head at location A is equal to pressure head, elevation head, velocity head at location E, plus the head losses that occurred from A to E. Rearrange that to get what I want, which is a, an equation for the difference in pressures that's equal to the, the unit weight times this difference in the velocity heads from the location E to location A, plus whatever head losses that occurred along the way. I had to calculate those two velocity heads at E and A. I, in my table, I found that I didn't have the, the flow at E and then the velocity at E. So that's calculated, that velocity is calculated here in my spreadsheet. And then the velocity head is there in my spreadsheet. I then had everything I needed to calculate the difference in pressures. The difference in pressure is that unit weight times the difference in the velocity heads plus the head losses divided by 144 to get it in PSI. I get a value for the difference in pressures of 36.28 feet. Oop, uh, 30, this is wrong. This should be PSI, 36.28 PSI. And for a different set of values, here, slightly different, I get 36.4 PSI. When I checked that, I got it correct. On, going on to the next problem, this is pumping from a lower elevation to a higher elevation, water at 15 degrees C with the given flow rate, the given length and the diameter of the pipe, a given difference in the reservoir elevations. It says that it's a sharp edged entrance. It also gives you the the pump efficiency, which I don't believe I have written down here. But anyway, you're asked to calculate the pump power in kilowatts. Here's my solution. I started off writing the Bernoulli equation to get an equation for the, the, the shaft head added from the pump. The pressure elevation and velocity head at the lower elevation or the lower reservoir are all zero. The pressure and Velocity head at the upper reservoir are also zero. The elevation at the upper reservoir is given. And then to that, I add the friction losses and minor losses, giving me an equation for the shaft head needed as the difference in elevations plus friction losses and minor losses. Step two was to find the unit weight 
or specific weight and the kinematic viscosity for water at 15 degrees C. I went back to table B2 and then I found that there were only values for 10 degrees C and 20 degrees C. I interpolated between those two to get the, the unit weight of 9.8 kilonewtons per meter cubed and the kinematic viscosity of 1.15 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared per second. Step 3, I found the relative roughness, the velocity, and the Reynolds number for the pipe. I found for this uh, it is plastic pipe. Yes, it's plastic pipe. I found that in that table it told me that plastic pipe I should use a smooth pipe value. And it's a, a reminder in the text, a, a mistake I made in working a problem earlier, is just because it's smooth pipe doesn't mean it, it, that there's no um, uh, friction losses. There are. We just need to use the smooth pipe value when looking at up the friction factor in the Moody diagram. Use this value, this equation to get the pipe velocity use and I get a value with the given flow rate converted to meter cubed per second divided by 60. Plug that value in here and the pipe diameter given at 0.3 meters. I get a velocity in the pipe of 2.36 meters per second then use that with the given pipe diameter and the kinematic viscosity that I looked up to get this value for the Reynolds number. Now I've got the uh, relative roughness and the Reynolds number. I can find the friction factor. Again, you can use the Moody diagram. Again, I use the Holland equation, checked it with the Colebrook equation for a smooth pipe and a Reynolds number of this number you get a friction factor of 0 0.0126. Next, I needed the sum of the minor loss coefficients. We have a sharp-edged entrance and an exit. Added those two, you get the sum of the case of L of 1.5. I could then find minor losses and friction losses. Darcy Weisbach equation for that, our minor loss equation. And I find that the friction losses were 28.58 meters. The minor losses were 0 0.43 meters. Go back to my equation for shaft head and find that the shaft head needed is this value and then plug that into the pump power equation. The given flow rate converted to meter cube per second, the unit weight that I looked up, the shaft head that I calculated, the efficiency that I'm given, and I get 142.2 kilowatts for these values. And that was uh, that was a correct answer according to to the homework system. So going on then to problem number three. Problem number three is nuclear reactor emergency flooding system pumping. We have a figure shown below. Have a reservoir that's at atmospheric pressure at the same elevation of the core, which is at a a high pressure, 2400 PSI. They're at similar heights. We're given a sharp edged entrance, water at this temperature, threaded co connections. Use the tables in the textbook to get the uh, equivalent roughness, the properties of water, and the loss coefficients. Use the Moody chart to find that friction factor. Got all of that written down here. Pipe diameter, the type of pipe, the it's the things that give you minor losses shown here. And what we're asked to find then is the pump power in thousands of horsepower. I looked up the values for unit weight and kinematic viscosity, got these values, then calculated the velocity in the pipe, 4Q over pi D squared, that flow rate that I was given here in gallons per minute, I converted to cubic feet per second with the conversions from gallons to cubic feet and seconds to minute, converted the pipe diameter to feet and got a very high pipe, a velocity in the pipe of 296 feet per second. Then I got the head loss, or sorry, I got the, um, the velocity head in the pipe as V squared over 2G. Velocity head came out to 1,364.5 feet. 
use that velocity and the pipe diameter converted to feet with the kinematic viscosity to get the, the Reynolds number. Find the minor loss coefficients. I said seven regular threaded elbows, three open gate valves. I looked these up in the table. I had an exit and then a sharp edged entrance. You add all those up and you get 12.45. I had to look up the pipe roughness out of the table. I uh, It said stainless steel. I could only find one for commercial steel. I found that value in table 8.1 divided by the diameter to get this relative roughness that Reynolds number that I previously calculated using again the Holland equation with a Colebrook equation check of it came out okay. Then I wrote the Bernoulli equation to get the shaft head equation or an equation for the shaft head. You see that everything is zero on the left hand side. I have the shaft head. On the right hand side I have the, the pressure head at the downstream location that I have to include as well, plus the friction losses and the minor losses. Found what that downstream pressure head was, but the given pressure in PSI that I converted to pounds per square foot, divide by the unit weight, you get this value for the pressure head downstream. Now I find the friction losses using the Darcy equation, getting this very large number in feet, and then the minor losses with the sum of the minor loss coefficients times the velocity head, getting this very large number. I then go back to my equation to get the shaft head needed as pressure head downstream, friction losses, minor losses. It adds up to this very large number. Then cal put that in my equation for the, the uh, power needed. There's no efficiency given, so I assumed it to be one. Put in the flow rate in cubic feet per second, so I've converted that from gallons per minute and then the unit weight, the shaft head needed, convert to horsepower and convert to thousands of horsepower, to get 135.5 thousands of horsepower. When I checked that, I got the correct answer. So I'm all done, and this is the end of this recorded lecture. Thanks for listening.